What's going on guys? It's OmniArk and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where we're going to be talking about the best commanders that you should be focusing on in Rise of Kingdoms. So my beginners at guide video for Rise of Kingdoms actually did way better than I anticipated and everybody was asking me a ton of questions about the game in the comments section but also in my twitch live streams of rise of kingdoms shameless plug link is in the description for my twitch account if you want to come follow me and check those out um but a lot of people had questions about the game and a lot of those questions came uh in the form of commander questions what commanders should i focus on um you know did i mess this commander up things like that um and so i'm going to be talking about commanders in this video today I just want to preface this before we jump into it really quick. Um, this video is primarily for people who spend, I don't know, less than $150 on this game. Um, the tips in this video are going to help pretty much anybody, uh, unless you're spending insane amounts of money and you don't use any of these commanders, which is hard to believe. Um, I think these commanders are very useful for a majority of players with that being said let's just jump right into it um the first commander we're going to be talking about it's got to be ethel fled this is like a really obvious uh commander to talk about if you guys didn't know the only way to obtain ethel fled is from the expedition shop there's literally no way that you can spend any amount of money to increase the rate with which you obtain ethel fled which means that the pay to win players are only going to get her maxed slightly faster than you um and the reason that it's faster is because they just are stronger can get through expedition quicker but other than that they're still going to be capped at like i don't know three to five sculptures of her a day maybe depending on the chest drops regardless ethel fled is a great commander she is the only free to play legendary that you that i guarantee you can expertise as long as you play the game long enough like i said you can get three or more sculptures of her every day for free um just by logging in at the reset so why do i like ethel fled is she a terrible legendary just because she's free no she's not um she's not the best legendary out there but she is very good uh she's primarily a support role um which you know i know a lot of people love to do dps but like let's just be realistic you're working as a team and some people have to support that team so ethel fled does a really good job at that um she does do a decent aoe to five enemies in front of her plus she reduces their attack defense and health for the next two seconds which is really really awesome she also decreases uh enemy march speed she also um increases uh damage by 20 percent if she has a mixed army which is cool and when you expertise her she gets an extra 20 percent damage to enemies who have been slowed which she does all on her own which is really awesome and finally she has the support tree which uh this rejuvenate skill gains 150 rage every time that a skill acto skill goes off which is super super good for um uh, for a rage engine and just shooting off active skills all the time so we're going to talk about some people we can pair with ethel fled to really utilize that but i needed to talk about her even though she's a legendary she is free to play super easy to get um you just have to play for long enough now the only other legendary i want to talk about in this video is actually minamoto because uh even though you have to pay money to get him you can get him five five one one for something like 30 bucks or maybe a little bit less um, and that's a pretty good secondary cavalry commander for a low spending player. Um, this first skill does massive damage. It has a direct damage factor of 1400 and then has a 50% chance to deal an extra 600, which is a 2000 damage factor. If it goes off, um, it'll only go off half the time. Um, plus it does that for two seconds. So it's actually 2600, but regardless it, i think it works out to be about 2000 on average it, i don't know you can do the math um but either way this is doing massive single target damage which is really really awesome and then getting this to five will give you 10 percent more march speed which is great and 20 percent cavalry attack bonus now what's great about this is that the counter to cavalry are infantry and infantry are the slowest troop type and cavalry are the fastest troop type so you're actually boosting your speed even more guaranteeing that you have a higher chance at fleeing from some of the more pay to win players who really have invested in infantry commanders now if you didn't know the way 
way to guarantee that you get him 5511 is to not take him past level 10 before getting this for a skill to 5. So that's what you want to do. Then on your next level up, get him to second star, which means don't try to push past that. Just get him to second star, then ma max this to five, and then take him all the way to four stars before using any more skills, hoping that um, any of the rest land on this one if you have any sculptures left over of Minamoto. Um, the reason is because this increases, uh, nor uh, or you have a 10% chance to increase uh, the damage taken by the target by starting at 10%, goes up from there, which is better than the barbarian damage if you're in a PvP scenario, which I'm imagine if you're watching this video you probably care more about fighting enemy players than pve content with that being said let's move on to the epic commanders because that's where the bulk of this video is going to come from because the epic commanders are not only are they pretty good i mean of course there's tons of legendaries that are super super powerful but let's be honest it takes 700 legendary commander sculptures to expertise a commander it takes 10 just to summon them and then 690 to get them all the way to expertise and if you guys haven't figured out yet getting a legendary commander sculptures is not easy if you get to vip level i think 10 it is you get one legendary commander sculpture every single day um, which means if that's your only source of legendary commander sculptures it'll take you 700 days to max out or expertise any single uh legendary commander which is you know what what is that two years something like that so yeah it's it's very hard for a free-to-play player to max out legendary commanders um with minamoto is the cheapest funny that we have him on the screen he's the cheapest to max because you just straight up buy him but regardless that's what we're going to be talking about epics because they are still pretty good and you're probably going to be using epics if you're watching this video just statistically most likely so who are the best epic commanders then right because they're way better than blue and green like let's just get that out of the way blue and green you can pretty much ignore and you're not really missing much um so you're mainly going to be using epics to fight other players and with that being said who should you focus on well there's a couple of different scenarios that i that i that would change my recommendations but what i'm going to start with is in general right i think in general the best two epic commanders in the game are joan of arc and also Sun Tzu. I think those two, I can't really decide which one I think is better. Um, some days I think Sun Tzu is better. Other days I think it's Joan of Arc. I think Joan of Arc is a bit more versatile, um, whereas Sun Tzu is really just uh, good at dealing damage to multiple targets. So with that being said, let's talk first about Joan of Arc because I, I really love Joan of Arc and she has a couple of different roles. I think she's probably the best to max first because she has this gathering skill which does not help you in battle and what that means is that if your kingdom is at peace at the beginning of the game then you might as well be gathering right and who better to put your sculptures into than joan of arc because you're going to get use out of that second skill and then later down the line when you are in battle you'll have already invested in a really great commander and you have been getting value from that investment that whole time because you'll have already maxed her which means you'll have this at five so that's why I recommend Joan of Arc first because, you know, in any scenario, she'll be good. If you're fighting people, she's good. If you're not fighting people, you're gathering, which she's still good. So that's why I think she's the best one to go with for, for, for the first, basically. Um, so why is she so good at battling, right? Because it's clear why she's good at gathering. Why is she so good in the open field? Well, it's because the, she can either be a primary or a secondary and i know a lot of players use her as a secondary myself included but if you really are free to play she's not a bad choice for a primary commander and the reason for that is the same reason as ethelfled and that is the support tree um she gets that 150 rage every single time a skill is used and you know when she uses her skill she gains 50 rage for five um per second for four seconds so she gains 200 rage just by popping her first skill and then she gains another 150 rage because of that skill being popped and then you can also pair her with any of the other commanders that generate rage such as pelagius or sun Tzu, and you're going to gain insane amounts of rage and you're going to be popping off skills way faster than maybe an uncoordinated or um you know just a, an enemy who just isn't really familiar with the commanders very well so that's why she's good as a primary now most players use her as a secondary because of this first skill um i'm really for all of her all of her fighting skills but um 
the first one is important because when you expertise her it says in the next four seconds she grants her own troops and nearby friendly forces a powerful buff that increases infantry units health by 30 percent increases cavalry units defense by 30 percent and in increases archer units attack by 30 percent then she gets that rage buff like we talked about so four seconds is a lot of time for the epic tier of troop a lot of these are going to be looking at like let's say Boudica, she uh, 25 percent for the next two seconds um same thing with yulji 30 percent for two seconds these are these are expertise commanders but joan of arc her skill is for four seconds which is super good because this is her best skill and she's getting it for four seconds well why is this so good well it's because not only does she buff your army she buffs all nearby friendly forces all of them there's no cap right if you look at someone like sun tzu he can hit up to five targets if you look at someone like kusunoki he can hit up to three targets if you look at someone like joan of arc she can buff up to unlimited unlimited targets as long as you're in the thick of battle she's buffing everybody around her which is super good because that means that you don't have to be a pay to win player to really support your team that means that she's buffing your pay to win uh, allies by 30 percent that's insane that's super super good amplified by the fact that they're going to be really strong anyway so that's why she's amazing because you don't have to worry about her talents to get this super amazing skill and then on top of that she has some healing she also has increasing her normal attack damage by 25 percent really really great so she's a great commander for just overall general battle right she's what i what i use her for is a secondary to scipio because scipio is very tanky he's probably the most tanky epic commander because he reduces damage taken by 25 percent he also has a little bit of um sorry a little bit of healing factor chance here with 15 percent that's if he's expertise um plus he also brings 10 percent more troops which means he's just gonna last longer in the battle because he has more troops to la to last longer with so having scipio primary joan of arc secondary means that not only is this a tanky unit that you can put mixed troops in and benefit from them being mixed because scipio has the leadership tree which gains uh three percent different um i'm sorry three percent uh reduces three damage taken by three percent if you have a mixed army he also gains three percent more troops just from that he also gains um all sorts of these really really great buffs if you look here this increases all damage this one actually gives you weight six percent more damage but lowers active skill damage which is fine with joan of arc which is really really great so by having this pairing you're getting incredible value from joan of arc and keeping joan of arc alive for a very long time so that's why i love joan of arc right that's why i love her because she can be she can be a secondary and you can just throw a, a mixed army together with whatever you have left and pump her out into the battlefield and it, you know if her specific army isn't the most powerful that's okay because she's gonna last a while um and she is going to buff all of your enemies or i'm sorry all of your um allies that are nearby so with that being said do i recommend focusing on Scipio right because I did just say that he's a great primary for Joan of Arc and I did say that Joan of Arc is the one that I would focus on first um in this epic tier well it's kind of tricky because the thing about Scipio and I do still use Scipio right I admit I do still use him uh it's kind of out of laziness that I use him because like I said he is a great fifth army to just throw out on the battlefield as a little tank unit and just buff everyone around you buff all my armies basically as well um but he's way weaker late game than he is early game because late game you're going to be versing players that are very strong and Scipio can't really compete against their dps so do i recommend investing in Scipio? um i would say that he's not a priority unless uh you are at war and you're a young kingdom so i would say if you're maybe under 10 or 15 million power uh, as as a as a as a uh, i'm sorry as a civilization i guess um if your account is less than 10 or 15 million power then maybe it's worth investing in scipio if you're also at war all the time because early game like i said he's a great tank unit and he can bring joan of arc around and buff everybody and last a long time on the battlefield and your enemies will have a hard time killing him because it's still early game and they don't have massive dps legendaries that they can counter him with um but with that being said 
I don't recommend him for most instances, right? He should be one of the later epics that you max um, if you're trying to just fill a fifth army slot, right? That's what I use him for. So with Joan of Arc out of the way and that Scipio tangent out of the way, who is the second epic commander that I would recommend investing in? And we talked about him before and that's Sun Tzu. I think Sun Tzu is probably tied for best epic commander like i said earlier um and he has a different role than joan of arc it's not like he's buffing your allies like she is um sun tzu is a dps commander what do i mean by this well he is an aoe machine he's the best aoe commander in the epic tier one of the best aoe commanders in the game probably second to isong ye for sure um but he's super super good at dps and aoe because this first skill when it's expertise let's just read this right deals 800 damage to a maximum of five targets in a fan-shaped area and then deals an additional 200 to each target on the next turn so that's a thousand damage then he gains an additional 50 rage for each target hit by the skill so basically what you want to do with sun tzu is send him into the battlefield where there's just a huge brawl of people just there's just numbers and fights and battles and you just can't see what's going on you throw sun tzu out there and he's firing off these art of war skill attacks hitting five targets and regenerating 250 rage every single time and when he regenerates 250 rage if you look here that's a quarter of the way to setting this skill off again so he's just pumping out aoe damage onto the field and it's really powerful aoe damage he's dealing a thousand damage to each of those targets that's five thousand damage but but it gets even better because his fourth skill increases active skill damage by 20 percent so what that means is he's actually dealing 1200 damage to five targets 1200 damage i mean we looked at uh minamoto he deals 1400 plus this, that's about 2000 1200 is pretty close especially considering it's to five people at the same time that's insane right that's that's crazy that's 6000 damage from that and you're going to be pumping it off even faster because of its own skill super super good right if we look at his second skill here he also reduces damage taken by the garrison so you could put him on your wall if you wanted to if you're worried about getting attacked early game put sun tzu on your wall and feel good about that right um he also reduces damage taken by 10 percent making him a little bit more tanky and he also increases infantry health bonus by 10 percent which is notable right you could you could send him out as a full infantry army if you wanted to and that would probably be the most tanky option for him um but i don't know he's just so versatile that you wouldn't really want to put him in that box right you don't want to limit him to just that one infantry role because like i said throwing him out on the field and just getting him in the in the heat of action and and really focusing on his skill damage he's going to be pumping out a ton of it which is really really great so sun tzu really great epic commander for you to focus on um if i want to talk about pairings right i talked about pairings for joan of arc sun tzu could be a great primary for someone like ethel fled um because they're both doing skill damage they're both doing aoe they can both just do a great uh job in just a big old brawl full of people and with ethel fled they're debuffing you're probably going to be doing even more damage with uh with sun tzu now i'm i'm on the fence right because right now what i'm doing is i have um sun tzu full um full skill tree because of you do have a little bit of, of rejuvenate here it's not as powerful um but you also have uh rage regeneration here which is great for pumping out that skill damage um there's also uh there's just all sorts of like i could go through every single one but i don't want to waste your time uh burning blood is great because you get more rage there's a ton of rage generation in that tree which helps him pump off that skill damage but what i want to point out um is that if you you could do sun tzu primary with that skill tree and ethel fled secondary which is what i'm doing now but i'm i'm wondering if you max ethel fled you could do her max uh support tree right just like joan of arc i mentioned before and she'll get 150 rage every time a skill is used plus the 250 you get from sun tzu's skill if he hits five players so i mean jesus like that's 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 all right what's that 400 rage right i mean you're 40 percent of the way to launching another attack like that's absolutely insanity right so that could be another option i don't know which one is better it, it might be the case that ethel flood is better primary but regardless both of these commanders landed on this list so you should be focusing on both and you could figure out which one works best for you 
if i figure out which one is better i'll let you know in a future video but yeah so i would recommend sun tzu pairing with ethel fled you could also pair him with um yulji if you want to do a full infantry march um i would probably have yulji as primary then and have him with the full infantry tree um or you could pair him with uh sun tzu you could pair with well yeah that's pretty much it I, those are the two that i would recommend the most so with that being said, should you focus on Yulji? No, I I would wait. I would wait on Yulji. That's all I'm gonna say about him for now. Just don't really. I, I don't think I don't think he's worth focusing on. First priority, right? That's what this video is. Who should we Who should we focus on in order? So we talked about Joan of Arc. We talked about Sun Tzu. We talked about the two legendaries that I recommended. Who would be third, right? And I'm, I'm talking third because we're talking Joan of Arc. Second is Sun Tzu. Who would be the third epic that you should focus on, right? The third epic that I personally would recommend is Pelagius. Um, I think Pelagius is great for a couple of different reasons. I think that infant, I'm sorry, cavalry is probably the easiest uh, single troop type to focus on if you're free to play or low pay to play. And the reason for that is, well, one is Minamoto. Uh, some of you guys are going to get Minamoto and, that are watching this video. And that's a great reason to focus on uh, on, on cavalry especially early game you could get pelagius make him your primary max out that infantry i'm sorry max out the cavalry tree or the skill tree depending if you're going with uh, a minamoto secondary and feel great about about that uh pairing right there so basically um because minamoto is so easy to get and he's a great cavalry commander that's one reason why i think cavalry is great for free to play or low pay to play um, players to focus on but beyond that it's also because there's more options in the epic category for cavalry you have pelagius you have belisarius and you have vibars all of which are cavalry commanders and if you have um minamoto as well that's two full armies that you could have just all cavalry right and if you're focusing on all cavalry that's that's pretty good right you could have spain as your civilization really be buffing them um whereas if you look at infantry if you're a free-to-play player you focus on infantry there's really yulji and sun tzu only kind of buffs infantry right he gives health bonus that's it he doesn't do any attack defense whatever um so yeah there's, that's really your only option and there's no legendary that's easy to get and easy to max in the legendary tier that that can help infantry right um beyond that what about archers same thing you have kusunogi and you also have herman and that's pretty much it there's no legendaries that are easy to get that fit that bill so you're going to be stuck with if you focus on infantry one full army that focuses solely on infantry if you do the same with archers you'll have one full army focused on archers which is kusunogi and herman if you do cavalry however you could potentially have two full cavalry armies with great commanders that are focused on just that and so that's why i think it's it's easier for uh, cavalry is most accessible right for 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 any player um but especially for the free to play and low pay to play uh, uh players so that's why pelagius comes in at third because of the three epic commanders that we talked about i like pelagius the most because he's got a great skill damage here he does 300 damage and then another 300 damage at the second after that and then another 300 damage on the third second so that's 900 total damage and then once that's done he gets 100 rage so he's 10 percent closer to, to launching this attack again which is great then he increases attack and defense of cavalry by 15 percent if this is expertise 10 percent otherwise um that's just good that's 30 percent stat boost just by having him as primary this increases garrison and watchtower attack um that's actually pretty good but i wouldn't use him on the wall personally i just i don't know um and then finally he does have a little bit of heal which is nice because he heals 400 he has 400 healing factor it's 450 for two seconds so 900 healing factor is really good there is only a small chance of it happening but you know there's really not that much uh sustain for cavalry to begin with so having some healed once in a while is is just nice um so yeah he buffs your cavalry a ton he also has a big skill damage and i i think that's really really great um he also is the uh commander that you can get by picking spain at the beginning of the game so you may if you pick spain you may just be getting a ton of pelagius anyway and that's why i think he's he's a great third pick now who would i pair with him well 
you have options um i personally would pick buy bars because buy bars also increases attack of uh, by 20 percent for cav so this is just a really powerful cavalry army and he also has a really big active skill damage that hits a five target maximum and reduces their march speed so i think pelagius and Bybars are a very aggressive combination um if you don't have minamoto with that being said you could also do belisarius but what i actually prefer for belisarius is having belisarius primary with a secondary either probably by bars um a reason for that is because of the mobility tree i think uh, belisarius should focus on mobility he's one of the fastest commanders in the game and he should use him for running around the map hitting other players farms jumping from resource node to resource node um, because again this mobility tree he's just better at that um, so that's why i don't think belisarius is a great secondary commander um so yeah so third in line i think is pelagius because you know even though bybars is also really really great he does have that 20 percent cav attack buff um pelagius is easier to get because he just he comes with spain so yeah plus he again he has 30 percent stat boost here whereas if you look technically bybars only has 20. so i think personally pelagius is just a little bit better um he he really does shine with minamoto because minamoto has an even bigger active skill damage um but it is what it is if you don't have minamoto that's okay you don't need minamoto for sure you don't i haven't even expertise him and i have that option so yeah don't think that you need minamoto don't leave this video feeling like you need him um he is great he's easy to get he's easy to get him to five five one one but you don't need him so with that being said who's fourth on the list right let's say you've already maxed joe and you've already maxed sun Tzu, you've already maxed uh pelagius who should you focus on next well you can do one of two things right at this point we've already talked about three commanders you could focus on the commanders that go secondary to these armies right so at this point you could focus on scipio if it's still early game um if you've already maxed those three you probably you probably isn't early game um but you could uh, you could focus on someone to pair with um with sun tzu or you could focus on someone to pair with pelagius but let's assume that you are at peace and war is not imminent right who would be next in that case well i would probably recommend kusunoki um and and the reason for that is because now you'll have um a ar archer army if we look at kusunoki there's again there's only two options here in the epic uh category for archers there's herman and there's kusunoki and they also have the exact same talent trees so i would recommend pairing them together and what that means is that it doesn't really matter which one is primary but i feel like kusunoki is a better primary only because i personally think that kusunoki is best in an all archer army i think that's where i would use him i i mean you could use him on the wall but if you are i would use him as a secondary most likely um in which case his talents don't matter so i would use kusunoki as an archer primary and herman i would probably put all his points in either garrison or skill um but again it's not a big deal if you did one or the other like i said they are the same technically in terms of their talent options so that being said i like kusunoki a little bit more than herman um for uh open field battle because he does have that aoe it's not necessarily as powerful as sun tzu because he's only hitting three targets um but he's hitting each of them for 300 and then an additional 250 each second for the next two seconds so he's doing 800 damage to up to three people which total is more damage than the 1150 for the expertise herman now he does also remove all negative and control effects which is amazing in the current meta <coughs> basically what this means is removing debuffs and a lot of commanders right now are focusing on debuffing um even ethel flood like we talked about before has a powerful debuff so kusunoki is just like nope he pops the skill he's like nah now nah, you're not debuffing me nah nah not me so that's why i like kusunoki a little bit more than herman um he's just he just negates debuffs which is just really really awesome um great to have him on the field and yeah that's that's amazing 
um he does have this garrison uh skill which you know it's great if he's on your wall he's good there but um right now we're mainly talking about open field battle so that's kind of relevant his expertise does bring this to 15 attack 15 defense which is good um again if you want you want him to have an all archer army right because of this specifically and his archer talent tree of course and then his final skill normal troop uh normal attacks by troops have a 10 percent chance to deal an additional 450 damage each second for two seconds that's another 900 damage right that's really really good it is a small chance but having that little bit of burst damage is really nice um out on the field so kusunoki is the next person i would recommend again joan of arc sun tzu uh pelagius then kusunoki once you have that then i would definitely recommend filling in the secondary commanders for all of these uh of all these primary commanders now again it depends on your kingdom right if you're at peace then i would focus on the primary commanders first and then the secondary slot just gets filled with the correct secondary but it can be at whatever level right so like i said if you're focusing on kusunoki but you haven't maxed either of these two it's okay um because they probably you probably still have them and you can still put them in the secondary slot their talents don't matter you don't have to focus on leveling them up um really the re the point of this video is not only which commander should you put your legendary commander sculptures into first uh, i'm sorry epic commander sculptures into first um but which one should you be putting your experience tomes into first right they're going to be most useful on battle in battle at level 60 because that's when you get the maximum amount of talent points so <clears throat> with that being said um if your kingdom is at relative peace you want to really focus on the primary commanders because you want to get them to level 60 first and you want to get their skills max so that way they're the best that they can be in that role then start to focus on the secondaries however if your kingdom is still fighting a lot there's still a lot of war going on you do have to worry about player attacks then i would say maybe focus on joan and then sun tzu then focus on pelagius and then focus on a secondary for pelagius um and again you don't have to level them up to level 60 right secondaries you don't have to do that just make sure that their skills are maxed um then maybe do kusunoki focus on it on the on herman as a secondary for kusunoki potentially um it really depends on what you feel like you're lacking what your kingdom needs what your alliance specifically needs if you're in that situation where you're still fighting over territory and your regular home kingdom um it really depends at that point but i hope that this video gave you some insight as to my thought process on which of these commanders i would focus on we did talk about ethelfled and uh, minamoto at the beginning really great and accessible legendary commanders which is key um but the bulk of this video again was the epics and the order for that i would do personally uh is joan of arc sun tzu a, cl a close tie there then pelagius kusunoki and then focus on filling in the secondaries for them honorable mention is uh Boudica. if you do need another commander to fight mid early to mid game Boudica is really good she is a universal commander who doesn't care what um she doesn't care what troop type goes with her so she is pretty good um osman is is great for pumping out single target skill damage like absolutely insane you might even want to pair him with joan of arc primary maybe to get uh that that ton of rage generation from the support tree and then osman secondary pumping out tons of skill damage that's an option um and then also lohar is uh gets a little asterisk asterisk next to his name because you never want to use him against another player but anytime a lohar event comes around if you don't have him maxed do it and try to max him um you don't have to pump experience into him because he's going to get that automatically from his third skill but just keep him in the back of your mind um you don't have to focus on him but when his event comes around do it to get as many sculptures of him as you can with that being said guys i think this video kind of covered everything that i wanted to cover we talked about every single um epic commander at least a little bit and i think i gave you guys a pretty good list uh or a pretty good guide as to which ones i would focus on um this is all my opinion so some players may have different opinions some people may say go straight for pelagius because you want to focus on a single type and that that is true but 
I think realistically early game you're not gonna have all of one type so I don't know it depends on your philosophy on the game um, these are my opinions this is these are the commanders that I would focus on the ones that not only are great in the early game but you know Sun Tzu and Joan of Arc are still amazing late game you still see players use them even if they have a ton of great legendaries so with that being said guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you drop a thumbs up on it I really appreciate that comment down below any questions that you have about commanders or just the game in general um, subscribe for more uh, for more content like this turn on the not notifications if you don't want to miss another video and finally if you're looking for a kingdom to join if you're trying to figure out which kingdom should I migrate to my kingdom is boring I don't like the people I'm playing with come to kingdom 1062 that's where I'm playing we can play together I'm in the alliance called Lux um, they may only accept you if you're 30 40 million or higher uh, maybe even less if we have some open spots and you have a ton of participation and activity and kills and things like that um, but if not, if you can't join Lux, still join my server. We have tons of great alliances that would love to help you get better at this game. Um, if you are new to the game and this is the first video of mine that you're seeing on Rise of Kingdoms, I do have a beginner's guide that you either saw as a card on the top earlier in the video or maybe I'll throw it up again right now in case you have more questions about the game. I did make a beginner's guide and you should definitely check that out. Definitely start there. Um, with that being said, guys... Thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.